Rolling MC, and I am the mount on the mic of Hitting the Streets podcast show. Today on the show, I have Brian Izell. He is a singer, songwriter, musician, and producer. Brian, please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Brian Izell, and uh, I am glad to be here today. Yes, thank you so much for being here. So, no, so guys, I met Brian through his sister, who I had on the show, Veronica, if you guys remember, Journey V. And I want to give her a big shout out because she has been the one that connects me to all these wonderful and great people and Brian included. And so um, she did a mini show for me back in the day. And if you guys go to my YouTube channel, you can see it. And we also follow her on Spotify too as well. And Brian, are you on Spotify? I'm on Spotify and all of the other outlets okay make sure you follow these guys they have great music veronica has a beautiful voice i've got one of her songs um is also added to my playlist on spotify and i really truly truly enjoy her voice so enough about that let's talk about brian so brian tell me what what was the thing that got you into music what inspired you to get into this well um i've been singing and playing music like for as long as I can remember. I, my mom used to tell me that I used to uh, get in the back of the car and hear all the songs and learn all the songs on the radio. And all the other kids would be, they would be playing and uh, you know, fans of mine when I'm singing. So the older I got, there will be uh, musicians that I would follow. And, oh, okay. Uh, two, there were two brothers. That was, uh, they were close to me, mm -hmm. and I watched them play guitars. Mm -hmm. So the, the lead guitar player, um, which is, he's gone now, mm -hmm. but his brother is still here. Mm -hmm. And um, me and his brother, I would always follow him, and I, uh, so I was inspired by them. My grandpa used to play, so I was inspired by him. My other grandpa, my dad's dad. Uh, I don't know if he played or not, but he always had guitars around. So oh. it's like a premonition, like yeah. this thing, uh, it seemed like it was destined. So in your DNA. Yeah. <laughs> so, I felt like I had to do it. So where did you come up? So I know your it's your name, but where did you come up with wanting to decide to do this music and do it like the way you have been? I know, I think I've been in y'all's, uh, like knowing you guys for like a year or so. And so tell me what, made you decide to become the singer, songwriter, producer? Tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Well, uh, I think back in 2003, maybe, um, I was listening to a song on the radio, and I used to always try to sing like uh, the artist that I heard. And so sometimes it wasn't so easy because, you know, they had range, and at that time <laughs> I didn't have such range. So I said, you know what, I want to I wanna write my own song. Okay. I want to sing my own songs and, and hear myself on the radio one day. So um, I just wrote the song and I didn't know where it was going to go. I just mm -hmm. decided to write and see what it's going to do. Um, my dad took me to the music store and I, I, I think that was the first time I had gotten a, a mixer. Oh, yeah. It's like OM. Yes, OM. Yeah. Well, God, you really took it way back. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did that, and um, I got. I think I had a four-track tape recorder. Oh wow! I was doing it all the hard way. Yeah. So I, I got that, and then I, I had a CD burner. Oh my! I remember those yeah. too back in the day. The CD burner. Yeah. I used to be able to do that. You know, it's so funny you bring that up. There's some things that I used to do back then that come easy to me, but this editing on this right here does not come easy oh, to me. <laughs> I, I dreamt of this day. Yeah. When editing. Uh, came digital. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, um, there was a time I don't know what happened. I had a, I did a show, and I did a recording on this, and it didn't, it didn't work out well. And I had to send it over to Brian to clean it up for me. <laughs> Y'all, it was bad, and I couldn't do it. Like I was, first of all, I don't have patience to do it. So there's that. And second of all, I didn't know what I was doing with that program to to really know. And I had to send it over to him under an emergency. It was, it was a 911 call, because I was like, I gotta, I gotta put this out here on Sunday. And he, 
cleaned it up for me and took care of it and it turned out really good it really did but it was just you get, I got caught up in that and I didn't know what I almost felt like crying because I was like I can't get this done but you pulled it through for me so thank you for that You're welcome. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as you thought it was yeah I just you know I had to do a little bit to it but yeah uh, it wasn't as bad it's just it, it's funny how this show and what I've been working on has really uh has tested yeah. my skills. It's cool, I didn't think that I had, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what would you describe um, your music? What type of music do you create? Uh, I create uh, Christian, uh, easy listening, sometimes motivational, oh. inspirational, uh, just whatever positive message mm -hmm. that I can relate. Uh, you know, sometimes it's going to translate different to different people so you know you have different audiences and um, so you want to create different music I try not to stay in the box mm -hmm. and write just one style of music mm -hmm. because I'm an artist so I have to do whatever I can for right. as many as many people I can in, in this world so um, one person might not like this song so I gotta write this type of song right 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 it's it's more of a it's a little bit of R&B too with the Christian music because I know there's some of the I listed on YouTube mm -hmm. and and so it reaches out probably a lot of people on both sides wouldn't you think? It would. Um, I used to do a lot of R&B back in the day and uh, so when I started writing Christian music mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know what direction to go when I did it and said well if I do it once I can do it again. So I started wrote one song and then it sounded like this then the more I start writing, the, the more I heard my sound that I already had. Uh, and yeah. Like my message changed. Right. But my sound was kind mm -hmm. of blended, adapted. Yeah. So. Um, what are the biggest challenges that you had, you know, being in this industry? Uh, I think it's more financial. Is it? Yeah. The budget, you have to have a budget. <sighs> that, that, that <laughs> bad word, that B word. I think B word. <laughs> oh, budget. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's very true. Mm -hmm. I mean, and during you know, COVID was a big challenge for a lot of us. And uh, how did that did that ever affect you with what you were doing? I know you and your sister did a lot of uh, uh, what was it? What I want to say? Workshops. Mm -hmm. Um, down there. So, how did that? How did you guys manage through that piece? Well, we just continued to do the things that we could do in house, and um, anything that we had to outsource or mm -hmm. uh, use uh, the funds, mm -hmm. we just kind of scaled back and did as much as we could do right. on our end right. to keep it going until it picked back up. Right, 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 right. Yeah, financially, it's always a challenge. Our finances are always a challenge. How do you guys manage? I mean, how do you guys manage? You know, now with coming out, I, I guess I want to say post COVID. I don't know. I don't think we're even post COVID yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the students are picking up. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. We had a, we had a, a space and time where nobody came out, and then we had um, we tried to build a, a few things online. Oh. Zoom meetings. Okay. Kept mm -hmm. our uh, meetings, uh, uh, lessons going over Zoom meetings. And right. So, and it worked out for some, but it wasn't the same. I know, in person is so much better. Are you guys still doing the workshops? Are you guys still having those done? Well, we haven't done any uh, here lately. But okay. We're planning on getting some. Good. Going on. Good, good, good. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some advice here. So, how, how long have you been in this business? Um, 20. Oh, wow. <laughs> Since 2003. So, I'd say uh, almost 20 years. Okay. Next year, every 20 years. 20 years, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, so what advice would you have for someone wanting to follow in your footsteps? It's not easy, but if it's your passion, don't give up. Okay. I like that. Yeah. There's a lot of things that can deter you from doing it. And if you don't have a passion to do it, if you don't, you know, if that's not, if you're not driven by mm. what, you're, what you're feeling, mm -hmm. then you'll quit. Because there's a lot of things that'll stop you, but mm -hmm. you gotta keep going. Those roadblocks. Mm -hmm. And one day it'll pay off. If you think you will get paid big money out the gate, 
if that's what you're looking for mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. what are you what are you gonna do after that? I I, I wanna say this because you brought that up. You know, a lot of these younger generation, and I'm not picking on the younger generation, but what they see, you know, at what's projected out there, they see that it is easy just to jump out there and do it and make this easy money. Just because certain other artists went out there and made that, I want to say like a one hit wonder, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They don't understand, they don't know the backstory of that or how they got to the one hit wonder you know, I'm pretty sure those guys, girls, all of them that have been out there and do those type of things, they had a lot of work in behind it. You just don't see all of that. Right. And so it's really hard to, and, and I don't just from, I don't know that much about it, but I try to coach and say, it's always work you gotta put in to make things happen. And um, it, we need more coaching mentors in this industry so they can understand that they have these goals that they have to set in order to reach them and then to get to, to move forward and to carry on. Because at the end of the day, I don't I just don't the artists that just jump out in and say, I just I just did it. All I did was get up there and put a guy on the mic and rapped and this is what happened. I'm pretty sure there was more to it than that. Well, yeah. <laughs> for some people you it know? is for some people it's not. Mm -hmm. There's some overnight success stories that you know we've heard. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that takes them 20 years to get uh, signed or uh, mm -hmm. get popular. Right. Some people never get it. That's very true. That's it's very true. Just, I guess the situation. I guess it is. And I, I, I guess it is. And like you said, it's a mindset thing and it's a commitment, determination, having that initiative to, to continue on going and don't, you know, don't, you know, doubt's the biggest thing. You know, right. you start doubting yourself and you don't see, you know, things the way you thought they were going to be. So I, I get that. Um, if you could open a show for any artist, um, who would it be? Um, Jonathan Negri. Why? Is that? I like I like his style. Uh, he's young, you know, energetic, and um, he would probably bring something out of me. Oh, he would probably drive me to do a little bit more. Really? Because, yeah, because I, you know, I'm not that I'm not a dancer, but I get on stage and I sing. His, you know, give it all my all I got. So, right. Um, just seeing him mm -hmm. and, and the way he carries himself and uh, his style, mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of how I used to mm -hmm. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So when I got a little older, I kind of settled down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I think I would want to open for him. That'll be that. That's pretty cool. You need to bring that back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, what would you be doing now if it wasn't for your music career? Uh, probably tending to the kids and just everyday life, just taking it easy. <laughs> taking it easy. <laughs> I, I wish I could take it easy. <laughs> yeah. I, I might, I don't know, I, I probably would be working more. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm probably getting you know, some other things to investing. Sure. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of investments. Now, before you before we started this interview, before we got on the mic, you were talking about um singing and writing and producing. But you feel like um being a producer is more where you gravitate. So what what is that? What do you think or why do you think it's just it's a better feel for you versus your singing and your and your writing? It keeps me busy. Oh it's like uh, the arrangement, like when you're arranging the song, um, I just sit there and I'll take my time until it's good, it gets done right. And I'll, I'll have a cutoff switch. Sometimes I'll get on it and um, I mean, it just fascinates me to do it this way and do it that way and figure this out. And I mess that up and then I hear this frequency and so I'll just oh, wow. mess with it until I get it right. I might mix the song 10 times until I get it right. Okay. It might take more time. That's awesome. That's awesome. But, I, but I'm patient enough for the ten times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I would not be good at. I'm like, I need it done now. Yeah. <laughs> why is it not working? 
I need to work on that. <laughs> All right, so tell me where we can find you, where we can follow you. What's your, do you have a Facebook page, Instagram, and then talk, I know you said Spotify, but kind of tell us where we can go and listen to your music. You can hear it on Spotify, um, Brian Eagle Music on the social pages, okay. uh, Trinity One Records, and uh, uh, Brian Eagle Music for my, uh, my artist page. Okay, and you're on YouTube too, right? I you're, am. You, okay, that's perfect. All right. Any last thoughts before we before we sign off? Um, I'm just glad to be here. Uh, yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. You know, it's been a while. We've been talking about it, but I know. I got chance. To I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I hope I, I want to invite you to open mic too. I I put a little group together and we do it um, once a month on a Thursday. So I would love to have you come in and play and sing and meet other musicians here. Yeah. Yeah, I would like that. I would do it. Okay. Uh, I thought I was going to be singing today. I know. <laughs> we will make sure we'll do that next time. We just need to have a little mini concert, put that together here. That's what we need to do. Yeah. That would be fun. That would be fun. All right. All right, guys. That's it for me, your Rolling MC. Catch another episode on Hitting the Streets.